What's up, Blender artists slash investors? So today I'm going to show you how to make the uh, Tesla logo, how to trace it, and then uh, make it 3D. And you can even prepare for 3D printing. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to first delete this cube, of course. X key delete. There we go. And what you want to do is find an image of the Tesla logo. So we're just going to go with the Tesla T here. Not all these letters. You can if you like, but we're just going to go with the T right here. So find a nice flat version of it. Not one of these right here. Not this weird angle. Not this one. Something like this. That's cool. And uh, then not this one. Oh, here's one. Nice trace right there. Has a curvature. Uh, which one? This one, I'm not sure. It's not as curvy there. It's a little different. A little bit off. But um, something like that. A bigger image is actually better. The bigger the image, the better uh, the results. So you can zoom in and out and not without losing too much pixelation. All right, if anybody's interested in day trading, you can click on the uh, link in the description below and download the Robinhood app using my using my link there. And uh, we both get a free stock. So more about that later. So for now, let's make this logo. So like I said, find an image online, save it to your computer, and then go over here back to Blender Shift A and go down to image and bring down that image. And we're gonna bring it in as reference, reference here. And it's on my desktop. All right, so there's my image. Uh, looks like I got scammed here. Thought it was gonna be a PNG with the transparent background, and it is not. But that's okay. I don't mind. Also, if uh, your image came in and it's at like, a weird angle like this, all right, a minute. Just hit, just select your image. Then hit alternate R, and it'll undo all rotations, and then you can adjust it however you like. So I like having it here in the top view. Seven for top view. That way it's nice and flat here from the top view similar to the UV editor where uh, up and down it's going to be along the y-axis. All right, so there it is. And I'm going to bring in a plane, shift A, mesh plane. And I'm going to use a plane here to trace my, uh, my Tesla logo. And it's a plane, not a cube, not a grid, but a plane. And there's my plane. <clears throat> All right, and actually I want some transparency here. I want to be able to see the grid in the background. I don't have to, but in case you want to, I'm going to click on the image here. And then a properties panel, click on this image icon right there. And then activate transparency right there. And then now your image is transparent. And you can increase or decrease the opacity here. 100 or 100%, one, it's okay. I can still see the grid in the background. All right, so now I'm going to go back and select my plane. Now I'm going to take it to edit mode, tap key for edit mode. If your plane does not go to edit mode, that's because it's not selected. If you can't go to edit mode, if I have the picture selected here, hit the tab key, I cannot go to edit mode. No edit mode there, see? It has to be mesh. So I'm going to select my plane here. Mesh plane, and now I can go to edit mode there, and the tab key toggles off and on. And let me bring up my uh, screencast keys here so you know what keys I'm hitting. There we go. So I hit the tab key there, hit the toggle between edit mode and object mode. All right, and make sure you stay on top of you when you're doing this because if you go off a little bit, your image, your your uh, your model, the bottom surface of it or the top of it, it's not going to be flat. So you want to make sure you stay on top of you. If you want to do something like this. You hold on shift and you hold down the middle mouse button and you can move around the mouse. It's called panning. So first one, what you want to do is hold on shift and then hold down the middle mouse button and move that. Whereas if you just hold down the middle mouse button and do something like this, and that's orbiting, that's not the same. Set for top view. We want to see flat, make sure you see in top view. All right, so I'm going to delete uh, two of these vertices. I'm going to drag select here, hold down the left mouse button and drag across the top. There we go, I got those selected. Now I'm going to hit the delete key to delete them. Bam. And then vertices here from the delete menu, bam, all right. So now down here, I got two vertices left. And I'm going to use these to start tracing the uh, the UV map there. Sorry, to start tracing that, that image right there. So I'm going to click on this one here. G for grab. I'm going to pull it down right here and try to put it at the tip right there at the end. Click. Then I'm going to select this one. G for grab, pull it up, and I put it right there in the little armpit of the T right there. And there we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of hard to see. It's blended in there. I can hit A to select all, and it's still kind of hard to see, but it's there. I know it's there because I put it there. I'm going to activate the mirror modifier tool. That way, I only have to trace half of this. I don't got to trace the whole thing. And notice the whole time I did this, I was on top view. I didn't do this because that would have messed me up. It wouldn't have been enough flat anymore. Because, let's see, let me try that and show you guys what I'm talking about. So, your top view, let's see, I want to do, I just do them like this, and I move that up in there. Looks fine, but then I go over here flat. See, it's not, it's not flat. If I go over here to front view, G for right view, that's not, that's not what I wanted. All right, send for top view, G for grab, pull that up. 
and left click there there we go all right so i'm going to go over here to mirror modifier click on the modifier the wrench and the properties panel add modifier and mirror right there it looks like a butterfly and i'm going to activate clipping that way the ones in the middle touch each other and i can see there's a thin black line there and that's the mirror and then this one right here should be touching the other side g for grab yep right click to turn that off and put it back there we go all right so now it's going to mirror there on the other side and i don't have to play around with these other settings i just had to activate clipping as long as you're tracing here from the top view you don't got to worry about this other stuff there all right so now i want to start making the rest of this a little bit off but i'm gonna leave it you don't got to try to be perfect it's a little slight um adjustment there i'm just going to notice i'm going to pull out and oh, let me show you what i did there so i selected that one i had e to extrude then i pulled out and clicked right there so I want to trace this whole thing here. I can't just do one big one like that because then that's not, that doesn't give me curvature, right? So I need a bunch of little vertices in between there to start getting the uh, that arch there. So E, left click, sorry, E, move the mouse, left click, E, move the mouse, left click, E, move the mouse. As you notice, I'm adjusting every vert the vertices there. E, move the mouse, left click, E, move the mouse, left click. If one of them is off, I'm going to put one off on purpose, like right there. Just go back and fix it later. Just keep tracing, fix it later. And then I hold on shift and I push on the middle mouse button so I can move this around. And I did this when E was not activated and I'm still in top view there. Let's see, now you can see it better. E, click, E, click, click there, E, click there, E, click right there. Need some curvature there too. E, right about there, E. Click there, E, pull the mouse, left click, E, pull the mouse, left click. And every time you hit E, that extrusion tool is active. So if you hit E, then you try to change your view, this is going to happen here. So I'm holding on shift in the middle mouse button. You don't want that going on. And uh, I got it stuck somewhere. Let me see, Z, uh, G, or Y, or Y again. There we go. All right, click right there. <clears throat> All right, so don't try doing the panning like this. If you have E activated, see so it E, and then that tool is active until you left click. So you pull the mouse and left click, and now I can do this. So you don't want to try to pan while you have um, extrusion activated. E to extrude, pull out, left click there, and I messed that one up on purpose because you want to keep going and then fix it later. E, extrude out, left click, E, extrude out, get a little bit more curvature. Left click E, shoot out. Left click, and then this one goes straight down there. And make sure you try to go all the way to the other side over here. That way it connects with the other vertex there in the middle. And right about there, left click. Cool. All right, so you got one messed up. Just click on it. Then hit G for grab, and then adjust it back into place. There we go. So it's easier to do that now instead of trying to adjust it as you go along. You want to do a little adjustments at the end. All right, so now I got to trace this top part here. So all I got to do is just select two vertices. There we go. Notice I just got these two. I didn't make a big giant box like that. Just select two right here. Any two will do. Your pattern doesn't have to match mine. You don't have to have the same number of vertices as mine. You can have more or less. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I'm a little bit off there. It's okay. Overall, when it's 3D, you won't really notice it that much. Just select two. Shift D. Boom. See, I just made a duplicate. I'm still in the top view. And I'm just going to position one of these vertices, one of these corners here. Left click there. Cool, I got it there. I'm going to select this one there. G for grab and position it in place somewhere along the curvature of that uh, that arch up there. Click. Cool. And continue extruding from here. E. Pull the mouse. Left click. E. Pull the mouse. And left click there. Pull mouse. Left click. There we go. And the vertex does not have to match with the grid mark in the background. It's just as many as you want. The less, the easier it's to work with, the less you have to worry about, the less vertices you have. The more vertices you have, the more curvature uh, you'll be able to, to duplicate there, to create the, uh, the, the illusion of. There we go, got it there. E to extrude, this one straight up. Click right there, E to extrude, click right there. And notice this one right here, I went all the way over so that it merges with the other vertex there on the other side. Thanks to clipping activated right there. E to extrude, left click 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 E to extrude, pull the mouse out, 
left click E to extrude, and I guess we can just finish it off right there. And left click there, cool. So I got that all adjusted there. If you have any other ones you want to adjust, go ahead and select them. Hit G for grab and then left click wherever you want to place it. All right, so let me clean this up a bit. I'm going to hit A to select all. There we go. And obviously, I don't need the background anymore, so I can go here to the outliner, my reference image here, and just click on this eyeball here to hide it. And there we go. There's my Tesla logo. There's the mirrored side. Hit A to select all. Go over here to mesh. And then you're going to go over here to clean up. And delete loose in case you have any loose vertices out there. And there were all loose. Undo. Sorry, don't do that part. A to select all. If you accidentally did that, hit Control Z to undo. So go to mesh. And then go to clean up. And go into merge by distance. So if you have any extra vertices in there somewhere. So say, for instance, you hit to extrude to pull one out and you didn't extrude it. It's, on, it's inside of the other one. That'll get rid of those extra ones. Mesh. Clean up. And this is common with... Uh, New Blender learners, new Blender beginners, Blender users is having uh, extra um, extrusions. Merge by distance, boom, and it tells you down here if, if we removed any extras, so zero. So I've been doing this for a while, so I don't have any extras there. So that's good. And now I'm gonna fill in a face right here. I'm gonna hit F for fill. Cool, fill in a face, doesn't look so good there, so let me undo. Undo that, let's see what's going on. Let me select that one, G for grab. Use there, G for grab, G for grab. All right, so what's going on? A, F for fill. Undo. All right, so I'm going to apply the mirror modifier, then I'll try filling the face again. So to apply this, you have to go back to object mode, tab key. I'm going to click on this uh, little chevron here. Not the X, it's going to close it, then you have to re-add it. So click on the chevron here, and then select apply. There we go. Make sure the whole thing is flat. If for some reason, with the tab key, one of these goes up like this, if you got something like that, hit A to select all, hit S, Z, sorry, yeah, S, Z, zero, enter, and then it makes them all flat. So, once again, if you got something like this where some of these are up like that, hit A, S, Z, zero, and that'll bring them back down, make them all flat. And that's an edit mode. And now, also, while I'm in edit mode, let me try to fill this in again. F for fill. There we go. So now it works. So I'd apply the mirror modifier, and now I fill this in. And now let's make it 3D. I made it E to extrude and go up a bit as much as you want. Depends how thick you want this. Obviously, if you go like this, it's going to look ridiculous, <clears throat> kind of like an eye bar. So we're going to do that. And E to extrude. And that's fine right there. Cool. There's my logo. Got my good uh, Tesla logo tab key. Uh, right now, I'm going to get it ready for 3D printing. But before I do that, let me tell you guys about Robin Hood. All right, so Robinhood is a free trading app. If anybody's interested in investing in stocks, investing in the stock market, right now as a recording of this video, January 8, 2021, the stock market is booming. And with that uh, $600 stimulus check dropping in a bunch of Americans' wallets, uh, bank accounts, I uh, recommend investing in Robinhood. A lot of millennials are doing it. You can definitely benefit from that. And most likely it'll grow a lot faster than putting the money in a savings account. If you don't know what to do with your stimulus check, I recommend investing in it. And you can get started on developing your investment portfolio by downloading the Robinhood app today. It's free and it's easy. All it takes is $1 to start trading. That's right, one freaking dollar. So you might be thinking, well, I need a few thousand dollars to start investing. No, nope, $1 is all it takes to start trading with Robinhood. If you're afraid of losing your money, then you can play it safe. You can buy index, index funds. And those are basically Stock like houses, stock markets, so not stock markets, like a company that just invests in a whole in a whole industry. So for instance, there's the NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, the Dow Jones. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 invests in the top 100 companies. Uh, tech companies, sorry. The NASDAQ 100 invests in the top 100 companies, uh, 100 tech companies, and it'll grow with all those tech companies. So if you're not sure what tech company to invest in, if you invest in NASDAQ, it's investing in the top 100 tech companies. Uh, if you want to invest in other industries, you can invest in the uh, S&P uh, 500 or the Dow Jones. And those are just investing in uh, different industries like uh, construction, uh, the oil industry, and it'll grow as they grow as well. There's a drop in that, it'll drop. Obviously tech companies have been growing. They've been uh, doing really big. I would recommend uh, buying a bunch of NASDAQ funds and that's the safest thing you can do. Uh, this is the passive approach. It is a passive long-term approach. If you uh, want to be more active, you like to gamble, which I do not recommend, 
Uh, but you could get a high, high payoff, but it's also high risk. You could lose all your money, just like gambling, sports gambling. I know a lot of sports gamblers. Uh, maybe I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't admit that here on YouTube, but I am a little embarrassed to say that I do know a lot of sports gamblers. And I'm not definitely not one of them. I don't even watch sports. But if you're into that, you can start day trading. You do need at least $30,000. If you want to trade the same stock three times in one week, you do need at least $30,000. If not, you can trade different stocks here and there. And uh, high risk, but high reward, but also big losses, big losses. And of all the people that I know that do uh, constant trading, they're not making any money. They're, they're constantly losing money, to be honest. So I'm more of a passive approach. I just buy index funds and safe stocks that I see is growing like, uh, like Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, other tech companies as well. I saw outside of the NASDAQ. Well, those companies are in NASDAQ, but I invest in them individually as well. Uh, either way, the stock market is always growing. Even when there's dips, we had the Great Depression back in the 1930s, the Great Recession uh, 10 years ago, and we still recover from that. We never reverted. We never been, went back into the Stone Age. We're still growing and the stock market is constantly growing. And I would recommend investing instead of uh, saving your money. Actually, I would recommend both. Do both. You know, put your eggs in multiple baskets. But definitely uh, investing will most likely give you a, a better uh, return for whatever money you're, you're storing out there. So what are you waiting for? If you want to start making some money, take advantage of the uh, big growth we have now. Take advantage of everybody depositing their stimulus checks into uh, Robinhood. Go ahead and download it. Use the link in, my, in the description below. We both get a free stock if you use my link there. And... Uh, Thank you for listening to my little ad here. Now back over to the project. All right, so here we have the Tesla logo. If you want to just have one for a 3D animation, go over to Rendered, and you can just color it. Rendered Materials New. We call this one Ren. Making a red material here. Base color, let's go with red. There we go, cool. So nice red, looks a little plasticky. Increase the metallic here, make it look metallic. There we go, nice shiny. You can reduce the roughness here, make it even shinier. It's uh, that looks kind of dull because of the background colors there. So let's uh, increase the roughness there. There we go. I think uh, 50 was good, 50%, 0.5. There we go. If you want to 3D print this, then you're gonna have to go over here to edit, then go to preferences. There we go, select add-ons on the left side. Then inside the search bar, type in 3D. And you'll get something right here, Mesh 3D Print Toolbox. You're gonna click on the box to the left of it to add a check mark, and you can close it. It'll be active once you add that check mark there. Hit the end key on your keyboard for Nancy, and you're gonna get this tab right here, 3D Print. I have some other ones here that you might not have. It just depends what, um, what you have activated. So I have 3D Print, make sure your, uh, your object here we're selecting, and then click on Check All. It'll check for any flaws in there. Overhanging faces just two, that's okay. Intersect faces, not sure which ones where those would be at. And then open up cleanup and select the sorted. It'll fix any distorted faces, looking good. And then click on make manifold and it'll solidify this so it's ready for 3D printing. There we go. If for some reason your, um, your Tesla T logo got distorted, then go ahead and hit undo. If it got destroyed or something, and go back to edit mode and see what's going on. Usually it's something that needs to be patched up in there uh, you might have to start over. If you have a little bit of knowledge, you can probably fix whatever issue was there. Also, when you make manifold, it could get destroyed as well, whenever, wherever there's some parts missing there. All right, end key to tuck that away. I'm gonna save this file, save as. So there it is, I just saved it. Save it as a Tesla, uh, as the, the, with the name Tesla logo, end key for Nancy again. And I'm gonna go down here for expert, export. So I can export just this mesh here. You might, have, you might have other stuff there, but I only want to export this. So that's why I'm going through this process. If I go to File, Export STL, so I want to 3D print this. If I go to File, Export STL, it's going to print, it's going to store everything that's in there. So you might accidentally have another piece of mesh over here somewhere, another plane that you accidentally brought in if you're a new user to Blender. And then I'm going to, I can name it right here, or I can just right click it as well, and then give it a name right here. Rename Active Object. Tesla T logo. Cool. And then click S. There's a format STL. There's other formats as well. OBJ, whatever form you want to go with. STL is fine. Export. And cool. There it is. And it's going to go to the same spot where I saved my file, which right now is a desktop. And there it is, ready for 3D printing. You can position it however you like for 3D printing. I would 3D print it with a uh, flat, that with the raft. That way the, uh, the raft will fuse together these two parts. We'll put them together. 
and one object, whereas if you print it standing up, there's going to be a gap right there, and then this part could break off. So thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Hope you liked the video. If you are interested in day trading or just investing, I wouldn't recommend day trading, but just investing long-term uh, long, long -term gains, uh, please click on the description below, download the Robinhood app, and we both get a, a free stock. Have an awesome day. You can uh, support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, and it helps. Take care.